Everybody knows that the dice are loaded. Everybody rolls with their fingers crossed. Everybody knows the war is over. Everybody knows the good guys lost. Everybody knows the fight was fixed. The poor stay poor, the rich get rich. That's how it goes. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that the boat is leaking. Everybody knows that the captain lied. Everybody got. This broken feeling Like their father or their dog just died Everybody talking to their pockets Everybody wants a box of Don't even know their own name Why? Because he took it away from them Please, please 20 million Everybody black people don't even know their own language why? Because he took it away from them. 20 million black people who don't even know the history of their ancestors. Everybody knows Why? Because that he took it away from them. And if you try and tell them how far completely they've been robbed, he says we're teaching hate. They manipulate our history. Everybody knows the history of our nation. But there were so many people who just had to be. Without your clothes, everybody knows. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. That's how it goes. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that's how it goes. Everybody knows, and everybody knows that it's now or never. Everybody knows that it's me or you, and everybody knows that you live forever when you've done a life. Everybody knows the deal is rotten Oh, Black Joe's still picking cotton For your ribbons and bows And everybody knows And everybody knows that the plague is coming Everybody knows to understand is that when people have a movement or a product or a brand they have to target somebody they have to target various groups certain demographics because people identify and are very specific to certain ideologies and these things and so you see all right let's go back to when i was a kid a very similar movement there was this idea to get kids to hold up the devil's horns, white suburban kids to hold up the devil's horns. And they used rock and roll music to associate with devil worship, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, all these things, rock concerts, and the musicians themselves throwing up the devil's horns and living a life that would do Satan proud. So this was an ide ideological movement about Satanism, and there was also this, the counter group was Christians. So I grew up listening to rock music, my friends did, smoked pot, whatever, in high school, 
and they there was this attitude about Christians trying to shut down the fun. Like this was rock, you know, musicians, rock bands would comment on this in their music and things like this. And so there was this movement and there was an enemy, a straw man enemy about all these Christian groups trying to shut down rock and roll music. And, you know, so again, this was targeted specifically at suburban white kids. And you see this now with hip hop music. Let's talk about the top down. The top power couple is Jay-Z and Beyonce. And Jay-Z, we know for a long time, has been holding up the pyramid and the capstone and putting his putting it over one of his eyes. And he got, like, Warren Buffett to even do it. And then there's these fans at his concerts and Beyonce's concerts that do the same thing. And then there's this old video that resurfaced from MTV Cribs when Beyonce was in Destiny's Child. And if she revealed that she was sleeping in the bed from the movie The Devil's Advocate, and there is no bed in that movie, I, I went through it and checked. No, there's no bed in the whole movie. And she also has a bedspread that is the color of royalty, purple the color of royalty, and it has a giant pyramid on it. 
and she talked about this Illuminati symbol being called the Rockefeller on the Tyra Banks show. And recently in his rap, uh, in his, one of his rap songs, Jay-Z is about his family, talks about two billionaires is better than one. And there's all this Illuminati symbolism in that uh, video as well. Beyonce putting her uh, hand over her eye and putting up two as he says this. And so you have this power couple. And what hip-hop music has been about more than anything else is about money power. Now, you hear how many times is there in a rap song where somebody talks about their money, making money, how much money they have, all these types of things. And, of course, the pyramid and the capstone are in the back of the dollar bill. So it's become a symbol of wealth, money power in the hip-hop culture being targeted at young black kids and black people in general. So you think about this, the association with money power as making it, that when you have money, this is a validation of your life, and the gateway, the institution, the organization, that is the god of this money, is the deity of this money, is the Illuminati. Okay, so there's lots more evidence here. I'm just going to go through some of it. You have this guy, T-Pain, who said the following. If there is an Illuminati, boy, I'm looking for them. When asked about joining the Illuminati, he said, boy, I'm looking for them. I'm telling you, boy, I'm trying to get in it. I would be way richer than I am right now. So this is him documenting this idea that the Illuminati is somehow the gateway to wealth and power. And then there was this you think about the most famous and uh, the wealthiest athlete right now. LeBron James signed a billion-dollar deal with Nike. And you see him, uh, there's this well-documented footage of him in his pre-game ritual throwing up all these Freemasonic and Illuminati hand signals. And, of course, he's been tight and associated with Jay-Z. So you take the number one black athlete and the richest athlete, and you take the number one power couple within the hip hop culture, and you see that there is, a, they are both saying that wealth and money power is associated with the Illuminati. And so I recently covered this guy, Metro Booming, who apparently is a movie producer, is a uh, record producer, music producer. And he has a brand called Boom Illuminati. So it's right in the brand itself. Again, He's marketing to hip-hop people, black people, not specifically, but definitely that's the target audience. And there's Capstone in the Pyramid, these giant medallions that he's selling. That his, that's his signature piece of his jewelry collection that he was selling. And this trended on YouTube trends. And then there was this other guy, Soul Illuminati, who appears to be just a regular sort of YouTuber who has a big following, and he has his own clothing line. The Soul Illuminati clothing line. Again, the Illuminati is, has a positive association here. There was that also that Chris Brown performance at the Black Entertainment Awards where he performed on a capstone of the a giant pyramid with a capstone right there built on the stage, you know, costing thousands of dollars. And so this was, again, targeted specifically at black people. And then there was this young and aspiring rapper that decided to get into the Illuminati by murdering his friend and hoping they would contact him. And so you see this. The evidence is overwhelming that within the black culture, of course, all these in basketball now, it used to be that when you made a three-pointer, you would hold up your arms like you just scored a touchdown because that's how the referees would signal that it was a three-pointer. And somewhere along the line, it changed to holding up the 666 and then sometimes holding the 666 up over your eye. And you see fans doing this at basketball games where they'll hold up the 666 when someone hits a three. Okay, so you should be able to see this by now. And I'm sure there's, there's many things I'm forgetting or don't know about. But there is an association with money power and the hip-hop culture and the Illuminati. And that the Illuminati is seen as a positive organization and something 
and they are reaching out to this demographic and targeting the black people, the hip hop culture, young black people. And so again, and also the Bloods and the Crips are red and blue, like the two colors, the two uh, lodges, the Red Lodge and the Blue Lodge of the Freemasons. And so you have all these things, right? There's just this overwhelming association between the hip hop culture and the Illuminati, which is clearly intentional. So if you think about, okay, so let's, that's one connection. And that's one way that the African American community, black people are being targeted by an organization. And how do the controllers, how do the people at the top of the pyramid feel about black people? What are some of the other movements that they've targeted against black people? Well, clearly, and I've talked about this, this is well documented, and some white people dispute this, but the police definitely profile black people. There's no doubt about it. This is, while my black friends when I was growing up told me about this, one of my buddies, uh, black friends from my basketball days, when uh, I was in college, he was driving and he got pulled over by a cop in a, you know, not a, not a city, like a small city in Connecticut. And he was from a suburb. Uh, he was just not, you know, not some inner city guy or whatever. And I could tell how stressed he was when the cops pulled him over. And the cop treated him like crap. You could just see the difference. And clearly, this is something you see now, where the cops are paid to profile and keep black people out of white neighborhoods. And so this is not something black people are making up or some victim conscious thing. This is clearly the case since slavery has been abolished. And so um, this is just one way that the controllers are treating black people in a negative way. Another way that they treat black people in a negative way is abortion. There is a huge, it's a, a black woman is five times more likely, a woman of color is five times more likely to get an abortion than a white woman. And so that's a huge disparity, five times, 500% more likely to have an abortion because they don't want black kids running around. They want to get rid of the black population, clearly. The controllers definitely want to get rid of black people. And I, you know, you can just see the evidence everywhere. The kind of foods that are targeted towards black people, the kind of lifestyle, the places where that they are living in terms of uh, violence and these types of things. There's all these various ways that the system itself is showing you in terms of drugs and violence being pumped into their areas and all the rest of it. Of course, the abortion issue, that's genocide. When you're targeting abortion, well, this is something they've done globally. Whenever a population, they've done this in India and China, when they're pushing abortion and all kinds of various uh, contraception and things. They're trying to reduce the population, Chinese people, Indian people, and in America, black people, and Africa, black people, where they're pushing for sterilizations and things like this. This has been well documented. So if you put two, to two and two together, when it's, clearly, when it's clear that the controllers want to reduce the black population, if not get rid of it altogether, and they're pushing the Illuminati on them. Well, this would mean, right? <laughs> Do I have to say it? This would mean that the Illuminati is associated with eugenics and and reducing the population. I mean, that's what, with all the evidence available to us, that's what it looks like. There is sort of this death culture thing associated with the Illuminati. The evidence for this is overwhelming. All right, this is Paramano, definitely reporting from the apocalypse. Everybody have a blessed day and be grateful. Listen, they're all a part of the Boston. You have to, you have to take the oath. The oath is the Boston, even if you get a recording deal. But you are not into destroying the Lord's word unless you get hand chosen to be a part of that $20, $30 million work. Now, they just don't tell you, hey, you're going to get that $30 million. They offer it to you. Because you have to be perfectly aware that we're asking you to do this. See, they just can't trick you. You get me? They just can't trick you and say, well, he don't know he's serving the devil because the Lord won't honor him. You have to be perfectly aware that you are going against the Lord's people. You
You're going to get what the law stands for. And when you shake on it, you sign that damn contract in blood. And I'm telling you how they get down. You sign the contract in blood once you agree to these men that you're willing to destroy God's word. They give you a taste of the good life. You know, you get, they take you on uh, private vacations to isolated islands. Or you get the, the penthouse suites and hotels. You get yachts, private jets, shopping trips. They lavish you with gifts. They make it look like it's the good life. This is the good life. Join us. You can have anything you want. You are a god. You can have the world. This is what they tell them. They don't tell them the small writing. And so people get, get infatuated by the luxury and the lavishness of being, wow, running elbows with the rich. The rich and the elite. Your own private jets and yachts and islands. And the good life. They're treated very well. And then they join. They decide, okay, I'm going to join. I'm going to join with you guys. And you start moving through the levels and you realize, hey, wait a minute. I, this isn't what I signed up for. Because then you start learning the ghastly truth of Satanism. And then when you get in, it's rituals, eating babies' hearts, sacrificing babies, drinking blood, being forced to have, if you're married, adulterous relationships because all of them are forced into adultery. Satan doesn't honor a marriage. You're married to him. Satanists have their own services that mock Christian services. They have them almost every weekend. They have them in underground churches across the, across America. And they do everything opposite and, and against what a real church would do. Why would you want to join a group of people that think eating feces and drinking urine is fun? It's not optional. You have to do it. They all do it. And they don't complain. They get beyond that stage. They, they don't complain. They do it. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, what do you do? You go to an underground Hollywood club, a super secret Satanist club. Do they serve feces on toothpicks? These people are nasty. And you, you, you tell us the sheer de demonism, demonic beings that control them, that make them do it. I mean, what human could eat feces and not just puke? Eating feces is huge with some. Huge. Anything abominable, abominable is high-ranking with Satan. Anything that we would think is, is totally inhuman abominable then that's what you must do in Satan's realm these these groups are, are huge there could be 100, 200 people at a gathering, they meet on estates in, in people's mansions often on a, a Friday or Saturday night so it looks like the person's having a, a party maybe they meet in churches on Saturdays underneath Catholic churches uh, for rituals They have these rituals where they bring in animals And this weekend pretty much all the groups had donkeys And they force all the members to have Sexual relations, bestiality with the donkey Okay, you You've been on my nerves for two months, you get the cat And you You've been on my nerves for a month, you get the dog and you, the highest ranking of us all, you get the donkey. She chooses who gets what. And she forces them to be sodomized. They all do this, not just her. They force them to be sodomized by donkeys. They force them to perform fellatio on donkeys.
And nobody gets away with it just because you're the president of the United States who goes to the Chicago ones where Penny Pritzker is in charge. Just because you're the president doesn't mean you get out. It means you have to give more because you've got the highest rank in the land. More, more abominable things are expected of you. It goes on. One of the biggest things you give up is any kind of humanity. It's nothing but about humiliation and degradation. You want more, you have to give more. You have to give up everything about human, what makes you human. And they all don't sit around in their black robes. That's so Hollywood. Because in all these rituals, a big part of them is the orgies that take place. They all take their clothes off. They're all doing drugs. And when you cause death and suffering, it's accredited to you, and that's more power that you get. You know, these people are willing to have sex with donkeys to help ask people to, to support their fashion lines. Because you don't get uh, a big-name brand in America, unless you're one of them. So Kanye West is coming out with a new fashion line. And he wants everybody's support. So yeah, he'll he'll do his rituals in Chicago and, and ask for everybody's support. Yo, what's up, guys? Press reset here. So, turns out Kanye West blames himself for his mom's death. But it's a little more specific than that, folks. And I'm going to get into all this. And any of you out there who don't know, well, there's a cabal that controls the music industry and the entertainment industry, Hollywood, etc. They're really into the occult and they value and cherish loyalty toward them toward their initiatives and these celebrities and stuff are just puppets for the real controllers um so what they do is they get these celebrities to show their commitment show that they're loyal and the best way to do that the most indicative uh sign of loyalty to them is blood sacrifice uh and a lot of these major celebrities indeed have sacrificed their loved ones to get this popularity and fame. Of course, they have to be talented in the first place to even get the offer. But this is what goes on quite often with the big, big time celebrities, okay? People like Kanye West, people like Jay-Z. And I'm going to show you some evidence suggesting that this is indeed the real deal. But first, let me go get into this uh, breaking news here with Kanye West. Kanye was asked by Q Magazine what he had to sacrifice for his success, and he responded, quote, my mom. Yeah, and he also said he didn't want to go far into it because it would bring him to tears. I'm sure it would. Yeah. And check this video out real quick. If you want evidence suggesting that this stuff really goes on, well, here you go. And oh yeah, by the way, this is Professor Griff from Public Enemy in an interview he did, I believe, back in 2007, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll play it for you. He admits it. Blood sacrifice. It's a real thing. So, so let me let me let me let me ask you this about the about the house situation with your house getting burnt down. Do you think the Illuminati has something to do with that to try to send you a message to try to quiet you or well this is something I've never really said on film I've said it on film but I have it I had that particular tape locked away in my safe behind my desk and no one has ever heard me say this um but I think it's time that we kind of get this out in the open that um you know on on the occult science radio interview and world star and some other thing interviews that I've done I've actually talked about the blood and the human sacrifice well, I'm going to look right in the camera and say this. I was supposed to be that blood human sacrifice for public enemy. But I survived it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And since I survived it and I'm talking about it now, now it's imperative 
that these people silence me. Plain and simple. I've told you about people that I had to deal with right in front of my door right here. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I tell people, look, when you call me, know that this conversation is being listened to. What? Right there. I'll leave links so you can check it out for yourself. And uh, by the way, it's important to understand the impact Public Enemy had, okay, on hip-hop culture. It was huge. An anti-government, anti-establishment hip-hop group. It was the first of its kind. It was a big, big deal at the time. And, um, well, he was supposed to be the blood sacrifice, and it never worked out. So, that's why you saw Public Enemy break up and all that. So, you know, this guy dedicated his life, Professor Griff has dedicated his life to exposing this cabal that runs the hip-hop industry and entertainment industry, okay? You think he went that direction for no reason at all? No, he truly believes in what he's saying here. That's what we have to remember. And it looks like Kanye West, well, he sold out to the Baphomet, folks. He he sacrificed his mother, apparently, to, to get, get his fame and, and to... Uh, get far in the industry it seems to be the case let me know what you guys think again i'll leave links to all this it's been press reset keep your head up stay real and no fear an i team exclusive tonight the hudson family killer william balfour is serving life in prison for murdering three members of actress singer jennifer hudson's family on the south side in 2008 tonight balfour talked publicly for the first time here's investigative reporter chuck gowdy chuck Ron, the murders received worldwide attention. William Balfour was Jennifer Hudson's brother-in-law at the time and was arrested right away the day of the killings. So he was never confronted by relatives or reporters, and he never testified at his trial. So when he offered to talk for the first time, the I-team came with a list of tough questions. William Balfour, inmate K76904, asked to meet with the I-team to explain why he says he shouldn't be here at all. I didn't have nothing to do with the case. I don't know who did the case. The case, as he puts it, was a triple murder here in Englewood, in the home of his estranged wife, Julia, Jennifer Hudson's sister. A jury found that on October 24, 2008, Balfour shot and killed Hudson's mother and brother and abducted her seven-year-old nephew in a jealous rage. The youngster found shot to death in this stolen SUV. Police said the keys were found in Balfour's pocket. And witnesses said they had seen Balfour with a distinctive chrome and black pistol like this that was used in the murders. Did you ever have the gun? No. So the people who said that they saw you with the gun were lying? Exactly. We had one hour with Balfour here at Pontiac, Illinois' oldest prison built 140 years ago. He's among 1,500 of the state's most violent men. During the interview, he accused many of the prosecution's 81 trial witnesses of lying, including his friends and then-wife Julia. She testified that Balfour had repeatedly threatened to kill her family and then her. You wanted her dead, didn't you? No, not at all. We wasn't even in a relationship anymore. You told people that you wanted her dead, didn't you? That never occurred. Then my whole allegation. You, you never said it? No. Never. Not one time did I ever threaten her. Period. Balfour was on parole at the time for a 1992 attempted murder conviction. Prosecutors used cell phone records to place him near the crime scenes, cited gun residue on his clothing and on his car steering wheel, all of which he claims were planted by police or concocted by evidence technicians. To hear you describe it, right. this was a huge conspiracy. Exactly. Exactly. Would have involved lawyers, witnesses, the police, technicians. Is that correct? All right. of those people. Right.
The jury deliberated two and a half days and found him guilty of everything. The judge called his soul barren and sentenced him to life without parole. His appeal last year was wholly rejected. Illinois justices saying there was plentiful evidence he killed all three members of his wife's family after many threats to do so. And last month, the U.S. Supreme Court refused to take his case. Why should anybody believe what you're saying now? I mean, it's up to them to make sense out of it. Because if you make a statement and the statement don't add up to the way the murders happen, then it's a problem. That's reasonable doubt. 34-year-old Balfour is a career criminal. The police paperwork on him pages long. Since age 14, a gangbanger, carjacker, burglar, and drug dealer, a 10th grade dropout whose father and brother are both ex-cons. If you didn't kill Jennifer Hudson's family, who, who did? I don't know. I mean, I could sit here and speculate to many names and just throw them out there to you. It, it still won't solve it, period. Balfour refused to answer only one question. Why did you not testify? I was told not to take the stand. By whom? Um, my trial lawyer. You could have overruled that. I know that, but it was things that were discussed in private as far as taking a stand. Whatever those were, he wouldn't say. But he was happy to discuss his boyhood friend Jennifer Hudson, who a year before the killings he was pictured with toasting her Academy Award. What would you say to Jennifer Hudson if she was sitting across from you? I didn't have nothing to do with her family being killed. Period. Did you ever think about Julian? Of course. I mean, I don't know, man. Huh? Do I miss him? Yeah. Do I love him? Yeah. Why would a seven-year-old have been killed? That's what I'm saying. It could have been the wrong place at the wrong time. A person who comes in there to kill somebody don't care who they kill. That seven-year-old boy could have identified you. That's what I just said earlier. They can say that he could have identified me. That's the reason why he got killed. Oh, he killed him because he could have identified him. Now, Julian was smart. He remembered faces. And what do you think about a person who could kill a boy of that age in the way that he was heartless. killed. It's pretty heartless. He got no family morals, nothing. What happens, they have a, they start thinking about things, and the conscious word on them. And, and, they, and they, they, they're getting these phone calls saying, you didn't throw up the goat today. And notice you didn't do those subliminal messages like we told you to in your record. So what's up with you? I'm just having a nervous breakdown. Get your ass together and get your act together. See, Fantasia tried that, and they got her back on track. I'm telling you, they had them second thoughts. It's too late. You get me? Fantasia got in too deep. Now, when she had first won American Idol, she should have just took the contract and left it alone. But, see, they want more. And how they get you, they dangle stuff in front of you. Well, you know, you can get, you know, the way you're going, you get a shoe line, you get a jog line, you get these clothing, your shirt. How would you like all that? Just keep doing what you're doing. They're putting it in your head, so later on they're going to pick your ass and say, you gave any thought to want to go higher? I would love to be in a $20 million club. Okay. Then they have one of them women come. See, they, a man ain't going to talk. Have a, a woman that's of the sisterhood be like, well, this is what we need you to do. I ain't fucking him off. Well, don't tell me what you ain't going to do, ho. You're going to suck him off, and you're going to let all the other guys go up in you. And if you don't do it, you will not have the money you have now. We're going to freeze your account. And if you tell the secrets, we'll kill your family. And she'd be like, what you talking about? They got pictures of your family, man. Once you become a part of these people, they have private investigators to go around taking pictures of your family. Did you know that? When you join into Satan's kingdom and you join the high, revel high levels of the brotherhood, it's expected of you to be as vile as possible. If you can't be vile, you're not going to get anything. You stop going to the meetings and you stop going to rituals, you start slowly losing everything that you had built up. You have to give to get in Satan's kingdom. 
They'd met to do rituals. These people, these freaks are always meeting to do rituals together. Because if you want to, the, the, the movie roles coming in, then you've got to keep doing the rituals. If you want more fame as a singer, you want more time on the award shows, then you've got to be doing your time in the rituals. If you don't do your time in the rituals, then you suffer. Satan, Satan makes you pay. If you want to be a celebrity in Hollywood, then your attendance at these parties is, is going to be mandatory. Eating feces, drinking urine, having illicit sex with these old men. You give up everything. See, that's dealing with the realization that they sold they sold. They can't, see, every day they have to be high. They have to, like, be on a planet of nowhere because when you really think about what you've done for, for a few dollars, and they sad as hell. Everybody asked that question in the hood. Well, damn, man, they got them houses. They got all them freaks. How could they be sad? Because the Lord make you shame-faced after so long. The Lord put the shame on you and show you to your face. You sold out for a season. If, you're, if your ultimate goal is to be famous, then you're going to do a lot to, do, to get there, like sign your name in blood in a contract with the devil. Now, you got issues with the industry. What's going down with the industry, dog? The industry is, a, is, 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 is full of a bunch of dick-sucking, dick-riding, bending over the desk-ass niggas, straight up like that. Whoever don't like it, bring it, nigga. Bring it. I don't give a fuck. Bring it. Bring it, bitch. Well, the industry is, is, is full of uh, homo... Hating ass niggas. You know I mean it's like they 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 got they got these new, this new breeder rapper that's that's paying DJs to play this shit. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? They 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 they, they sucking the the, the uh, record label executive dicks and it's like they, they, there's too much of that going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let me be me. Let me be the artist that I am and just play my motherfucking music. You know what I mean? Exactly. Now they want you all up under this. You know, sitting at the at the going to dinner with them and shit like that and you know all that favor for a favor shit. I don't get down like that. Look, I give you the music, you give my money. That's it. Uh, a lot of the love I had for wanting to, for, you know, for wanting to be a part of the industry is not there anymore. I'm not, I'm not, I don't even associate myself with the industry. You know what I'm saying? I'm not an industry artist. I'm an artist in the industry. But, um, yo, T.I., thank God that, that he's free at last. Um, Jeezy, oh my God. Um, you know, Jeezy. Buster Rhymes, that's it. Uh, uh, oh, Rick Ross. Rick Ross. Oh, Rick Ross. Rick Ross. Oh, Rick Ross.
brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, just out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes. I'm telling people now, you know my new slogan is? My new slogan is we come out December 4th, we gonna own the fourth quarter. You know what I mean? We gonna own the fourth quarter. And if you don't jump on the bandwagon now, it's a problem. Because I don't want you jumping on the bandwagon come when we this far. You better hop on now. I'm giving all these magazines, every, don't chop this. Everybody a chance to hop on now. Don't come hopping on later. I'm not like winning the Super Bowl and then you want to automatically be a fan of mine. Don't do that. I'm going to advise you to hop on now and get on the train and don't miss it. Exactly. One thing I noticed about you, you're a really incredible dancer. Oh, uh, thank you. And I wonder, like, take moves from people like Chris Brown. What? You said, do I take moves? Yo. Why would I take a move from you? Yeah. Yo. Nobody is touching my man. I got a million on it. <laughs> the best dance out. Real talk, bro. Turn it real. Honestly, my. You don't, bruh. So don't 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 ask his man. You taking moves from Chris Brown and don't ask no other disrespectful ass, stupid ass questions. That's real talk. You got a problem when you can highlight it, bro. Yeah, hold on. Hold that's real that, that's real talk. Oh, that's right, pimp. Yeah, you probably about to go do 106 and park. I missed the 106 and park, homie. I'm out, bro. Come on. Oh, I ain't even finna let you go out like that, pimp. And that's real talk, my and he come out, hey, and he can come out here and see about it too, for real. He can holler at Big D and Big Los if it's a problem. Hey, D handle that, Big D. Songs with gay rappers, and, and you know who are not obviously in the closet. Possibly. Yeah. Oh, when well, you said who not in the closet? Who is in the closet? Possibly, man. Yeah. Possibly. So, so, so you think that you've worked with a, with a gay rapper? Yeah, man. And and gay, not being just full out gay, but hiding and trying to pretend like he, you know, loves girls and lived the rap lifestyle. But really, he's a man fan. He's a man fan. Yeah. Man. There's a lot of man fans out there in hip hop. I got you. I got you. Um, I see how you niggas be looking at niggas when I be around, too. They be looking at niggas crazy. And you be thinking, you know, see, wait, wait, no. I'm saying, what you might think, you might just see a rapper, right? Looking at another rapper, you might think it's like, like he looking at a nigga like he got a problem with him, right? But nah, he really looking at him like a man fan. There's a lot of, there's a lot of man fans in hip-hop, man. bunch of you whole ass rap niggas that in the closet nigga yeah you're in the closet nigga know what i'm talking about you a homosexual know what i'm talking about i ain't got nothing against you but nigga the only reason why you probably hearing them on the radio a lot and seeing they video a lot money is because they got like little weird situations with niggas i don't know if it's like a homosexual situation some believing in a devil type situation some going against the grain situation niggas be doing any and anything they got to do Hundred plus, I got fifteen carriage, You understand? Ooh, you won't see them. They big and they swole. So when you when you kiss, <laughs> I gotta ask I ain't ladies. No kiss. I got y'all up here. So when you kiss a girl, right? Hey, I'm the only person he kissed. 
That's how I roll. That's how I roll. That's how I roll. We roll like that. Okay, now. Ain't no freak. Okay, that's... We just roll like that. And okay, my son, it... I raised him, you heard? I'm gonna leave that one alone. Oh, Jay Fizzle, yeah. for real. Jay Fizzle. Jay Fizzle. Okay. Uh, I got my son right here. Okay. Special delivery, too. Yeah, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big lap. How are you doing? Big lap. 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 Man, you know what I'm saying? You know, baby, being able to get one to do that, you know what I'm saying? Because fuck. I was brainwashed at one time. You know what I'm saying? I would have did anything the nigga said to. I probably wouldn't have went that far. You know what I'm saying? I probably would have been like, you know, what you tripping off or whatever, but, you know, Sean ain't don't know no better. You know what I'm saying? The whole thing. He don't know no better, though. I mean, you know, what could I say? Mm. <laughs> what could I say? I'm trying to give him some credit. to my boy uh, Ray J 24-7 coming to you live. We got a uh, serious concert that we got to attend to. <laughs> concert in my living room. You know, that's how we do it. We're 24-7. Everybody, I'm going to see how you grab somebody in. If you're feeling lonely, and if you're going through hard times in your life, just relax. I be best friends, love will never end, it will just begin, if I had one wish, you'd be my boo, promise to love you, trust me, I trust you, if I had one wish, we... The memories of Grand Rapids certainly feel a long way away. Oh, yes. That boy, that boy killing me. That boy killing me. That boy killing me. When I seen it, like for myself, too, there's a lot of artists I like. But I am the father of a 14-year-old child that's influenced by hip-hop, how I was influenced by hip-hop when I was young. So I wouldn't want him to do the Kanye skirt thing. When, when these guys do wear the skirts or their clothes, a a Rocky. or their clothes that look like female clothes, I think they have to understand the impact they have on our culture. First of all, I want to say, can you stand up? I got to see this outfit again that you have on. This is like amazing.
No more swords. No more weapons. No more systems. No more. No more superpowers. Charles! What the hell's going on? Who's turning the keys? The men are. Who greenlit the launch? Hank, do something! It won't shut down! We've lost contact with our Tridents and Polaris sons. The Air Force is reporting the same thing. So much faith in that. Tools in that. Machines. Russia, China, England, Israel, India. Everybody's got nukes in here. What's the target? But Where are they I want to play from a promotional video put out by Guardian Centers. Uh, some of the video for you right now, and, and we've been showing some of it uh, as well while I've been talking here, where, again, interspersed with the firefighters and other legitimate things, it shows the military rounding people up and every one of them is black now that's newsworthy right there uh, uh, i've been to these drills where they all are farmers wearing john deere caps and stuff saying you know you can't take my land you can't take my guns very scary stuff but it was a black farmer white farmer hispanic farmer little extra black folks i mean obviously saying oh it's for al-qaeda that's a bad group but it's really for all americans oh well blacks you know they're kind of looked down on quietly by some people oh look it's for blacks so it's okay and it's military and white guys white civilians looking on as groups of blacks tump over cars and you know get rounded up and thrown behind barbed wire i mean this is pretty outrageous but don't expect jesse jackson or al sharpton the race baiters to say anything uh, they're just there to create more racial division in this country, not actually point out that there's preparation to target black communities. 